Christia Freeland is in Victoria, BC, talking about affordable housing. It's ironic that she is doing so from this setting because such a kitchen in Vancouver or BC would cost millions of dollars. Let's hear what Freeland had to say. Okay. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'd like to acknowledge uh, the Lekwungen speaking peoples on whose traditional territories were gathered here today, the Songhees, the Esquimo, and the Wasainich peoples whose historic relationships with the land continue to this day. I am so glad to be here in Victoria today uh, with our friends from Town Townline Homes. It's been really exciting for me to see our government's plan in action um, and to see the incredible work that's been done here at Hudson House, which is a beautiful new apartment building right here in the heart of incredible downtown Victoria. Okay, so firstly, I have absolutely no doubt that Freeland is in fact excited to see her government's housing plan come to fruition. It's just that their housing plan does not mean our flourishing. It does not mean increasing our well-being. Instead, it means our struggle. Of course, Freeland is excited. Her plans, Trudeau's plans, Guillebeau's plans mean more Canadians are dependent on the federal government for provision. Of course, they're excited about that. They're socialist. Freeland's a socialist. Guillebeau's a socialist. And of course, Trudeau is a socialist. So yes, I have no doubt that they are supremely excited to watch the fruits of their housing policy come to fruition. Canadians struggling to make their mortgage. Canadians struggling to pay rent. Of course they're excited about that, because who else are Canadians going to turn to if not the members of Parliament in the federal government? Now, what about the prices in beautiful downtown Victoria, as Freeland is talking about here? Well, here are some homes, downtown Victoria, two bed, two bath, 847 square feet, $1.2 million, 528 square feet. That is practically a one bedroom uh, building, nothing else almost $600,000, 600 square feet, $600,000. So Freeland here in talking about beautiful downtown Victoria and giving this affordable housing announcement actually condemns herself in a stroke of beautiful irony. She proves that the housing market here is out of control. Um, before saying a few more things about housing, I'd like to highlight some encouraging economic news. Inflation in Canada fell to 2.9% in January. We're going to stop that right now. So inflation is still rising then. Suppose that you are traveling uphill at a rate of 10 steps up for every one step to the left. So you're traveling at a very steep rate. It's like inflation. Now it might be that the grade or the slope levels off eventually. Now we're back down to three steps up for every one step to the left, but you're still going up. It's still rising. You're still climbing the hill. So when Freeland here talks about inflation and make no mistake, the government's definition of inflation is incorrect. To call high prices inflation is incorrect. Inflation is simply an increase in the supply of money and nothing more. At any rate for Freeland then to say that inflation is only 2.9 or whatever it was percent is wrong. We're still climbing. If we want to return to price levels like we were at before, we have to experience a period of deflation. We have to go down the hill. We need negative rates. That's down from 3.4% the month before and down from its peak of 8.1%. This is real progress and a return to the Bank of Canada's target range. That's great news for all of us including the people responsible for this apartment building, um, people who are trying to get financing to build more homes faster. Thanks to the hard work of Canadians and Canadian businesses, Canada added 
41,000 jobs in February. That we would like to know how many of those jobs are public sector and how many of them are private sector. We want specific numbers. With more than double market expectations. Today, 1.2 million more Canadians are working compared to before the pandemic. Wage growth has outpaced inflation for the past 12 months for the past year. Real wages, that means wages after accounting for inflation, are now higher than they were just before the pandemic. Real GDP grew 1.1% last year. That's more than triple what was forecast. And it means last year we avoided the recession that many had thought was inevitable. <laughs> Did you hear that? We're not in a recession. People aren't struggling. No, real wages are outpacing inflation. Employment looks great. There's not a problem in this nation. No, there isn't a problem in Canada. The Liberals have built a strong economy. If Freeland even asked one Canadian, if she asked 10 Canadians, if she asked 100 Canadians, are you better off now than you were, say, 8 or 10 years ago? Statistics can be manipulated. Private sector economists, economists are now predicting that Canada will have a soft landing from all of the incredible and wrenching turbulence of COVID and what followed. And last Friday, DBRS reaffirmed Canada's AAA credit rating with a stable outlook. That is a powerful proof point of our government's fiscally responsible approach. All of this is progress, but we all know that so many Canadians so many people here in BC are still struggling to make ends meet. They're struggling to juggle their bills at the end of the month. They're struggling to find a nice, affordable place to rent or to buy that first home. And they're struggling to feel confident about their future. I wonder if politicians like Freeland are also struggling as well. They built this country. That is the country as it is right now. Aren't they building back better? Are they in the same position as the constituents they supposedly represent in the House of Commons? That's why we know that we have a lot more work to do to help unlock a brighter future for everyone in our amazing country, in this beautiful province. And that's why our government is working every single day to build more homes faster and to make life more affordable for Canadians and their families. And that's where Hudson House comes in. There are 245 rental homes at Hudson House, and 227 of these homes are for people with low and middle incomes. There are also 39 specially designed accessible units for people with disabilities. And people are living here right now. Hudson House is a great place to live with thoughtfully designed apartments. I really enjoyed looking through a couple of them and great amenities for residents. We are in the kind of kitchen living room um, and there are families to enjoy, including a clubhouse, a gym and a picnic area. It's a wonderful example of what great purpose built rental looks like, a real community that enhances the quality of life for its residents. And that's why I'm so glad that our government supported the construction of these apartments with a $100 million investment through the Apartment Construction Loan Program. Just before we continue, let's take a look at the Hudson House prices. This is on Rent Cafe. Hudson House, downtown Victoria. Here we have a 480 square foot. 480 square foot basically an office size uh, studio for $2,000. Two bed, two bath, 816 square feet, $3,300. One bed, 580 square feet, $2,500, $3,400. Two baths, 
is an essential source of support for purpose-built rental across Canada. We topped it up with 40 billion additional dollars in the fall economic statement because this is a program that makes the math work for builders like the people who built this great apartment building and it makes it possible for builders to build purpose-built rental communities like this one. And make no mistake, I am not criticizing those who are renting out the apartments. This is what the market is demanding. No, instead I am criticizing Freeland. I am criticizing her government and their economic policies because they do not ensure the well-being of Canadians. We're seeing right now what that federal government money can do, what that money is already doing here in Victoria and across Canada. In fact, the program has supported two more rental buildings nearby. One is just a few blocks away on Fort Street called the Sawyer Block, which has 60 rental apartments. And the other is in Cook Street Village with 47 rental apartments. Our government invested over $34 million for those two buildings and families are living there right now. Through the apartment construction loan program, we will also be offering low cost loans to post-secondary institutions like the University of Victoria, the University of BC and Simon Fraser University so that they can build more student housing on and off campus this will help more students to find the housing that they can afford close to where they study. And at the same time, will mean that there are more homes available for those who live in those same communities year round. We're building more rental homes across BD too. Last month, the Prime Minister announced that our government is working with Premier EB to build a minimum of eight to 10,000 new homes through the BC Builds Initiative. Our government is investing $2 billion in this initiative through the Apartment Construction Loan Program. That is a significant contribution from the federal government that will get those homes through BC Builds built faster. I'm looking forward to seeing Premier Eby later this afternoon, and I'm sure we're gonna be talking about how we can work together to build more homes faster and to make housing more affordable for people here in BC. The Premier and his government are doing really ambitious and exciting things on housing, and I'm looking forward to continuing our really constructive collaboration in that space. Um, a lot of the ideas uh, that we have discussed first in BC have not only been really helpful for people here in BC, but we've been applying them across the country. Les logements que l'on trouve ici à Hudson Hope, les nouvelles cut red, ta red tape, we're cracking down on short-term rentals, which have been keeping tens of thousands of homes off the market, particularly in cities like Victoria and Vancouver, where the housing challenge is most acute. And we've signed a number of agreements with municipalities across the country through the Housing Accelerator Fund, including with the city of Victoria, the city of Campbell River, and the town of Comox. These agreements will help cut red tape and increase Canada's housing supply. The Housing Accelerator Fund deals that we have done with BC municipalities alone will lead to the construction of nearly 120,000 new homes here in BC. Okay, so the federal government's plan to solve the housing crisis will do anything but solve the housing crisis. Instead, it will just impose more control into municipalities, more influence from the federal government, more government, more government, more government. That is the anthem of this government, of the federal government, and tragically of so many municipalities who have been willing to sacrifice their citizens on the altar of an ideological agenda to see more government in their communities. Instead of actively tackling the problem, for example, reducing demand significantly by stopping this mass immigration policy, the government instead decides to use this crisis, which they've created, to offer a false cure. And in exchange, all the cities have to do is pledge allegiance to the federal government. Here, take some money. Are there strings attached? Well, there might be, but it'll solve this housing problem for you. It's the same story. Time and time again, Solomon is right. Nothing new under the sun. 
that is moving the dial significantly. And I really want to thank the leaders of municipalities across BC that have been working so constructively with our government to make that happen. Here on the island, through the Housing Accelerator Fund agreements alone, more than 900 new homes fast-tracked over the next three years and more than 16,000 over the next decade. This is a real win for people across the island. Our government is working hard every day to deliver for the people of Victoria, for the people of BC, and for Canadians from coast to coast to coast. And the great apartments that I saw in this building are a wonderful example of our economic plan in action. So I do want to thank everyone who worked so hard to build these apartments. I want to thank, I think, is Paolo here. He's the building manager. Um, hi, Paolo. I want to thank Paolo, um, who, you know, it was really clear in the conversation with him how hard he works to build a community for the people who live here. Thank you very much, um, Paolo, Rick, Patrick. Looking forward to you guys building even more homes faster here in Victoria and across BC. Merci beaucoup, et je suis prête à répondre à vos questions. Yeah, thank you. Hi, uh, good afternoon. Uh, Wolf Tapner, Black Press Media. Um, uh, last fall, uh, Premier David Eby uh, expressed some frustration about uh, the level of support uh, from, from Ottawa. He said that Ottawa hasn't shown up yet uh, when it comes to some issues uh, around housing, transportation, uh, and, and so on. And uh, we're now in uh, the middle of March, just before, um, uh, uh, just before your, your government will table your, uh, your budget. Um, is, is the premier still uh, still right, or is he is he is he wrong about the level of support uh, that uh, BC is receiving from uh, Ottawa? Okay, well, I'm not going to speak for the premier. Um, <laughs> he is very capable of speaking eloquently for himself. Um, what I will say is, BC is an incredibly important part of Canada. Um, this is, you know, BC is one of the central pillars of our country, an engine for economic growth for the country. Uh, and the provincial government of BC is a really excellent partner for our government. We have a lot of values in common. And from my perspective anyway, we work very effectively with the province of BC. I am absolutely confident the federal government is there to support the people of BC in the areas that matter. We are there supporting the people of BC when it comes to early learning and childcare, an area that the province was a leader in, and we have provided a lot more additional money to let the people of BC get to affordable early learning and childcare across the province faster. On housing, we are working closely with the province of BC. I talked about those housing accelerator fund agreements with municipalities across the province. That's 120,000 new homes that are going to be built. Um, we're very aware of the BC Builds program, which I think is accomplishing a lot. And that's why the Prime Minister was really glad to come here to do an announcement with Premier Eby about $2 billion from the federal government that are going into that program. Um, I uh, had a chance this morning, uh, quite um, uh, by accident, to run into your wonderful health minister um, hmm. on the way here. Uh, we were on the same helicopter. Uh, and um, that gives me a chance also to highlight um, really the extraordinary support that the federal government provided um, working at that time um, uh, with the health minister with Premier Hogan uh, to provide $200 billion in healthcare support to the provinces and territories. So I all Freeland is doing here is completely demolishing her own argument. She talks about how much money the federal government and the provincial government have provided British Columbia, even though it's the British Columbians who are providing that income and Canadians from across the country doing so, providing all of this funding. And yet look at the state of BC right now. They are in a disaster. They are proving how devastating it is for governments to become so actively involved in markets, in society, and so on.
Freeland here talks about all of these wonderful gifts, all of these wonderful funding grants that the federal government has provided BC, and yet look where it's gotten BC. It's tragic. It's sad. So she's proving here that federal government money, your money, working through the federal government, does not guarantee flourishing. Quite the opposite. Quite the opposite. I really believe the federal government is there to support the people of Canada, whether it's health care, whether it's families and early learning and child care, whether it is housing and to support the people of BC. And I look forward to talking about all that with Premier Evie this afternoon. No, that's wrong. She is completely inverted in this. She says the federal government is there to support Canadians. Now, the truth of the matter is Canadians need to rely on the federal government for support. That's how the programs in the federal government's eye are supposed to work. When we listen to Freeland, she makes it sound like, well, the federal government simply wants to help Canadians and let them go their own way. That isn't the way it works. It's a transaction. You will receive funding if you do this. You will receive funding, but there are stipulations attached to that funding. It's not as though they support Canadians. It's that Canadians rely on them for support. You see the difference. It's one thing to give a man charity and say, I can tell you're going through a rough patch right now. Here's $100 or $200 and then send him on his way or you go on your way. No strings attached to the money. It's another thing entirely for that money to come from the federal government. It is not charity. They do not give money freely. No such thing as a free lunch. It's not as though they're giving the money and saying, here, do with it what you will. We can tell you're going through a rough patch. No, it's the opposite. It's you're drowning. Here we are with a boat. But you have to do a few things to climb on board. Um, Paul, of course. Um, question regarding uh, the budget. And uh, one of the big um, points of contention uh, that Premier Evie has brought up in the past was the um, sort of the differing, the differing support for different parts of the province when it comes to uh, heat pumps, for example, and when it comes to rebates on, on, on various forms of, uh, of, of fuel. Uh, and this was really an issue that came up uh, in, the, uh, in the fall. Um, what, if any, update can you give on that particular file? Um, will BC uh, receive this, the, the type of financial support that, for example, Atlantic Canada uh, received uh, or was announced back in, uh, uh, back, in, uh, back in the fall? Can you sort of comment on, uh, on that aspect? And what, if any, additional um, goodies uh, might you be able to uh, sort of hint here when it comes, uh, when it comes to the federal budget? Thank you. Okay, well, thank you for the question. Um, and I haven't had my meeting with Premier EB yet. I am genuinely looking forward to it. Um, we have a really constructive relationship with the province of BC. And, you know, in addition to working on specific things that the province may want and need, I find conversations with the leadership of this province, whether it's with Premier EB, um, with Katrina, your finance minister, to just be generally useful for me in terms of thinking about what are the policies that Canadians need today. I think BC is a real leader and I'm happy to learn from the BC experience, but I haven't talked to the premier yet, so I don't know what is gonna be at the top of his agenda. What I can say is what's at the top of the federal government's agenda when it comes to this budget is housing, housing, housing. I think that is the center of the concerns of so many Canadians. Um, and I would say particularly working hard to unlock the promise of Canada for the younger generation, to be sure that for young Canadians, it is possible to have a good life, maybe to live in a nice apartment like this one. Um, but also if you want to have your own home, that Canada is a place, that BC is a place where if you have a good job, if you work hard, that remains, that is achievable as well. We have <laughs> is, is that how Canadians feel right now? You have Canadians working two or three jobs, if they can find a job, to just try and barely scrape by, and she would have the audacity to talk about working a job and living in a wonderful home, that isn't the case anymore. That isn't the case anymore. Government has manipulated the markets for so long. And the state of the market right now is so sick that tragically, Canadians across the country are unable to meet basic financial needs. Or if they are able to do so, it's barely. They're working their lives away. They can't spend it on vacation. 
They can't spend as much time as they'd like and deserve with their families because instead they're trying to keep the house from sinking into the ground. Freeland is so out of touch on purpose, on purpose. Does she know what she's talking about? Well, with regards to economics, publicly, the answer is no. Privately, it's a different story. Publicly, we say Freeland has no idea what she's talking about when it comes to housing, when it comes to inflation, when it comes to this, that, and the other thing. But privately, Freeland knows how to destroy a nation using economics, and she's working her hardest to do it.